Jumper is mad at me, and rightly so, in all honesty. This is the Jumper T-Pro 1 Watt ELRS edition. It's cheap at just 58 quid, currently in the UK, but there were a few barriers in the way for me to have a go at this thing. The first one is that it comes in mode 2 only, and I'm a mode 1 flyer, so I knew I'd have to convert it, which sadly means taking it apart, unlike rival transmitters where you can do it through screw holes on the back plate. But it's worse than that because you have to physically switch the pots over as the spring is missing on the throttle. Now I made the stupid mistake of removing the throttle clamp, thinking that you could just move it over to the other side, which of course you can't. But there's no wiggle room at all for the throttle clamp, so if you tighten it up too much, the bottom of the gimbal catches on the clamp, and if you loosen it too much, the throttle just flops around and doesn't retain its position. So in short, don't touch the throttle clamp. There's no adjusting it, and if you think it's too loose, which I personally do, then there is nothing you can do about it. Just leave it as it is and swap the gimbals over. The second barrier I came across was reading about Jumper not working with the Express LRS devs, and the internal module could be potentially bricked, and at the time I'd ran out of brain capacity to get involved with what was going on with that. So in short, Jumper didn't add the ability to use Edge TX pass-through, which means you can only update the internal ELRS module by Wi-Fi, and you need to do that because it doesn't have the Express LRS Lua script installed out of the box. It's still using the Crossfire Lua script, and when you put the ELRS Lua script onto the SD card, the version number isn't even recognized. Now, I had no problems updating the internal module over Wi-Fi, but let's say you're using a desktop PC that's hardwired to your router. You can use your phone, which has Wi-Fi, and I think this might be where some of the bricking was happening, because phones have much weaker Wi-Fi abilities than, say, a laptop or a desktop PC with Wi-Fi. So if you don't have any devices that can do Wi-Fi, then this radio probably isn't for you, unless you're willing to take the thing apart and do some of the super workarounds that the ELRS devs came up with for this problem. They found three ways to unbrick the internal module. They all involve taking the transmitter apart, which is a pain because there's like 10 screws, and there are wires that are very closely connected together, which you have to keep together in order to power the radio up whilst doing all of this. The devs have made a binary that you can run while pressing down the bootloader button on the internal module at certain points of the flashing procedure. The second method is to solder a single wire from the bootloader button on the internal module to one of the shoulder buttons so that the shoulder button acts as a bootloader button. And the third most undesirable option is to use an FTDI adapter, which I'm just, no, no, I'm done with FTDI adapters now. Either way, none of that sounds fun, and I'm glad that I've got good enough Wi-Fi for the update to work without any problems. Sadly, the problems don't stop there. The two shoulder buttons are momentary buttons, which means that if you want to use them to arm, you would have to hold them down constantly. Ugh. They just haven't thought about how we use transmitters in the hobby, have they? Now, Joshy Bardwell has a video on how to fix that, so go and check it out. Then the six individual buttons don't work in the traditional sense, like all other radios do for Arduplane or Arducopter, etc. They are six individual buttons, however, they can only be used one at a time, which is useless. So again, Joshy Bardwell has a fix for this, so go and check that video out. There's no point me going through that here. 
The radio itself, as you may know if you are a regular subscriber to the channel, I'm not a massive fan of the form factor. The game style controllers just don't suit me. My hands are too big and too shaky, but I actually like the form factor better than the Zorro. I like the smaller screen. It takes 18650 batteries, although the covers are impossible to get on and off without some kind of damage happening. I suggest starting from the bottom. Even though there are these tab things to get your nails in, you will just ruin the covers. Go and look at some other reviews and videos where they have tried to take the covers off. The bit where your nail is supposed to go in is just destroyed. The all over material of the transmitter isn't better than the Zorro though. It feels really cheaply made and so do the gimbals despite them being hall sensor gimbals. The stick height is adjustable and the scroll wheel is nice and the menus are easy to navigate. There's a speaker to the side and the trim switches are kind of like mini joysticks which you can program to do other things because it comes flashed with Edge TS. The two three position rocker switches are probably what I would use to arm and disarm and also have my modes on. And then the momentary switch I could use as a lost model alarm, you just have to keep it pressed, that's not so much of a big deal. I don't want to go and do all the reprogramming stuff because I just don't like messing about. Now this one came with an SD card but it's almost impossible to get out due to the folding antenna getting in the way. Be careful as well because it's possible to slide the SD card into the body and not the SD card slot. They do provide an SMA adapter if you want to use your own antenna which will involve taking it all to bits. I'm seeing a theme here. I've taken this thing apart so many times. Then on the back, we have two potentiometers that have a center indent, but it's so subtle that it's really hard to find. And I'm not sure it's that useful. Jumper actually sent me a replacement back plate that turns one of the potentiometers into a locking two position switch, which is what we are missing. But yes, you guessed it. You don't just have to take everything apart, but you also have to transfer all of the electronics on the back plate of the module to this new one. Ugh. Then here on the top, we've got a trainer port, which is good, but no power wireless trainer and no audio jack. And after all of this bootloader controversy, there's actually a boot button on the top. Well, it's labeled boot. And I can't believe I'm saying this because they are listing it as a feature. You can charge the 18650 batteries using the USB-C connector next to it. But this also sets the radio into DFU mode. So when you pull the charging cable out, it could possibly wipe all of the firmware. So if you want to charge the radio via USB-C, you need to turn the radio off first of all, press this boot button, which is actually an anti-boot button, while plugging in the USB cable and it will charge without entering DFU mode. <laughs> the, the manual is boasting it as a feature that no other radio has. Yes, that's because no other radio wipes the firmware when it's being charged. Just use a separate 18650 charger like I do to avoid any of this mess. So it does one watt power output internally, which is bonkers and impressive. However, we can do 30 kilometers on 100 milliwatt and one watt is going to put a lot of strain on those 18650 batteries, not only when it comes to current, but also battery life. So unless you are trying to reach the moon, 100 milliwatt should be plenty. 
It's really nice that it comes with a carry pouch and a Velcro strap to keep it secure, as well as stick protectors. They also give you the light module adapter, so that plugs in the back and you can use other modules and protocols, etc. So despite all of its flaws and its clear lack of thought for the FPV community, I think if you are prepared to do all of the workarounds, there is some merit to this radio, especially when it comes to price. As I mentioned at the start of the video, it's currently 58 quid in the UK. You will have to add batteries to that, which will send the price up a little bit. But that's really cheap for a radio with this functionality. So I would actually recommend it with the caveat of, well, everything I've just told you in this video. So I think that's gonna do it. I'll put a link in the video description as well as a pinned comment if you wish to get one. They are affiliate links, so I get just a tiny kickback if you buy the product from those links. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps the channel out massively. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.